And the, the arm of the Lord is Jesus Christ. He is the one that we pray to. He's the one that we call upon whenever we're in need. I'm not ashamed of him. I'm not a bit ashamed of my God. He's not obligated to answer. You know what I mean? You don't twist his arm. You don't threaten him. You don't say, well, if you don't answer me, I'm not going back to church. Or I'm not going to do this. If you don't do that, you don't do that to God. God is going to do whatever God wants to do. And he's always going to do what's best for us. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, even, even the words that Sister Nancy just spoke are so in line with what the opening of this lesson today, this Bible study. If you go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1. A very, very familiar scripture. Uh, by the way, if anybody needs uh, anointing oil uh, as you go about praying for people, we've got how many? Two more? You already gave them both? Okay, we don't have any more. <laughs> hey, man, we have to go to Cracker Barrel again. But uh, it, it was amazing. We asked a lady for two empty bottles that were laying on the other table. And she gave us a story about what somebody done with. You know what somebody did with these? They put little holes in the top and made salt shakers, pepper shakers. I said, well, I'll tell you a better story. <laughs> we take these and we put anointing on and we pray for the sick. She goes, will you pray for me? <laughs> I said, we'll definitely be praying for you. And so God is good and he, he opens doors. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, very familiar. We've read this and preached off of this many times. The Bible says, come now. When is the time to come to the Lord? It's now, right? Not tomorrow, not, not in a couple of years, but now. And let us reason together. And that's just always has just blown my mind, that the God that created everything wants to sit down with little we us, and said, let's reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And we've asked the question many times, what color is sin? And a lot of people always say black. But it's not black, is it? It's red. I'm glad the Lord chose red because his blood is red. And when his blood covers my sins, he sees the blood. Lord, I pray today in the name of Jesus that we will be able to speak the word. We come to you in a desperate hour, but we don't call upon a God that is desperate. We call upon a God that already knows it all. You know the end from the beginning and you have shown us, oh God, way before this happened, where we would come to. And here we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to preach to you on the thought, an incurable disease. I, I, I want to look at sin in a different light tonight. We always get the idea by preachers that preach and we would like to accept their preaching, but sometimes we get it wrong. We, we get the feeling that our sins have been somehow dissipated. Like somebody described the word justified just as if it didn't happen. That's not Bible. That's not in the word of God. Somebody was just trying to say, what does the word justification means? And they said, okay, well, it's just as if you never did it. But I want us to know tonight that the, the Bible doesn't teach that. I did it. You did it. We were born in it. This is an incurable disease. Sin is incurable. There is no cure. There is nothing that is going to erase what you did yesterday, 
the, 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 the faults and the failures and the sins that we've committed, saints of God, they're there. And I know we, we sing the song, I can wash away my sins, nothing but the blood of Jesus. But the Bible talks about blotting out. And it talks about, though they be right, red like crimson, they shall be as what? Wool. What color is wool? White. Can I preach a little bit on white out? You make a mistake, typing or whatever, get a little white out and you white out. Is it gone? No, <laughs> nope, it's still under there. Right. My sin is an incurable disease. Right. And there is nothing that can cover my sin other than the blood of Jesus. Yeah. But let it be known tonight, saints of God, and I'm in the word. I'm in the word tonight. The day that you walk out on God, all the things that you did, all the baptism and all the speaking in tongues will not cover your sins any longer. The Bible says he healeth our diseases, doesn't he? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. That word healeth means a continuum. The day that he stops my sins and my diseases will be there. But guess what? He never stops. We're the one that stops. I'm walking this way, Brother Freddie, and my sins are covered by the blood. I'm walking towards, I've not yet arrived. The song says, not yet arrived, but I'm on my way. Oh, I'm not perfect, but I'm forgiven. Not yet arrived, but I'm on my way. And as long as I keep walking this way, the blood, the angels, all of heaven is covering my sins. My sins have been whited out. But I'm telling you, according to God's word, the day you turn around and you start walking the other way, God is not going to follow you back into sin. He's going to keep on calling. Come back. Remember the prodigal son? The father was not there feeding him, was he? He was not there covering him with his riches. There was plenty in the father's house. But when he got to the place where I don't have any more, I'm hungry. He began to think in my father, man, when I was walking that way in my father's house, there was plenty. Even the servants had plenty to eat. He said, I think I will arise. Quit walking in this direction. Quit being so bullheaded. Quit being so stubborn. He waited till he didn't have nothing absolutely nothing and he was getting ready to look at the food that the swine were eating what is that a type of that's a type of the alcohol and the drugs and a lot of people that have backslid have gone into that place to try to fill the void and if you're within the sound of my voice those that might be listening on youtube i looked the other day it's 44 people are listening <laughs> the message yes last week and say, Pastor, yeah, but a lot of people, they get like 1,500 followers. And you're happy because there's 44? If there was one, I'd still be happy. Why? Because God is reaching out. And if I can only find one. I was talking to my mother yesterday. And every time I talk to her, I get a little bit more of the testimony that I share with you about how God brought the Rios family to the Lord. My dad was a moreno. He was... Uh, dark skin and my mom she was light skin and, and when i came to immokley i came with that desire in my heart god i want to reach another evangelina and augustine that might be going down the wrong path that need to hear the gospel and one day i didn't reach out to these people i didn't go out knocking on doors i i didn't go to bug them or anything but the holy ghost was working and the, and the mom came in here and sat down right there. She wasn't dressed like an apostolic. But before the night was over, before God was done, she was at an altar of prayer. And she was light complected like my mother. She went home, told her husband. He goes, well, I'm going with you. And when he came, he was a moreno, just like my dad. Stocky little guy. He walked up to an altar, gave his life to the Lord. They decided they wanted to get baptized. 
and, 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 and it's nothing that I was doing. I, I'm just keeping the doors open. I, I'm just keep preaching the gospel. And, and they said, we want to be baptized. And I said, okay, bring your clothes and we'll baptize you. They got to the door right there and the husband told the wife, are you sure you want to do this? She goes, I want to do this. She says, oh, he says, okay, if you do this, I'm going to do this. But there is no turning back. Once we get baptized in Jesus' name, there is no more turning back. There is nothing out in the world to turn back to, saints of God. There is no cover for your sins. There is no healing for this incurable disease called sin. It's got to be covered. It's got to be dealt with. We cannot walk around as long as I don't think about it. Well, it's not there. It's there. <laughs> I've said it many times that I don't know what I would be without the Lord. But I've got a good idea. My wife knows me more, more than probably anybody in the world. She lives with me and she knows my thoughts and, and the things that I battle. And, and she knows that if it wasn't for the Lord, what I would be, I would be so lost without God. So my only hope is not ever to turn back. My hope is to follow the blood. Follow the redemption. God didn't come to this world for no other reason. No other reason. He didn't come to say, well, look, I'm God. We love the, we love the revelation, right? Oh, man, we got the revelation. Oh, Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. In him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And this excites us. We put on the back of a shirt, Acts, Acts 2.38. Ask me about Acts 2.38. We love the doctrine. But God doesn't get way too excited. He knows who he is. He knows who he was when he walked on this earth. You know, but he didn't come for, for us to somehow set him up on a pedestal. If he had come for that reason, he would have came on a white horse as the son of a king sitting on a throne. But he came and he was born in a manger. You know why? But he wanted us to know the only reason that I came, I, I didn't come to condemn the world. I didn't come to the rule the world with a, a rod of iron. I came that the world through me might be saved. The only purpose for this whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is not to prove the oneness of the Godhead. Whoa, I dropped a lot of people there. A lot of Pentecostals said, turn it off, turn it off. God already knew who he was. And he said, you know what? A lot of people don't know who I am. But I'm, I'm telling you, if you come... And are born again, according to the word, I'm going to tell you who I am. It tells us right in the word, right? But if you're not born again of the water and of the spirit, you cannot see it. I, I heard a girl the other day that is walking according to the world. She tried to explain the Trinity like this. She says, I know the Trinity. I know, I know how to explain it. I said, okay. She said, it's like my husband. He's a husband. And he's a father, but he was also a son. See, that explains the Trinity. And I'm like, oh, my word, you just explained the oneness. Because there's only one of your husband. You don't have three men as your husband. There's one husband. He's a father. He's a son. Well, I got one God, saints of God. He's a father. He's a son. He's the Holy Ghost. But he didn't come just to show us the oneness or the doctrine but he came that we might be saved. And that's why he's saying in Isaiah, let us reason together. Come on, you losers. You that are lost. You that are sick with this incurable disease. There has been a lot of, uh, a lot of work being done with incurable diseases right now. If you go on Wikipedia or on, on the internet and look up incurable diseases. There are scientists and doctors that are working together from different nations and they are coming to an understanding of what causes some of these diseases. And they have decided and they understand now that a lot of them are in the blood. Incurable diseases include rare diseases, which in 80% of cases are genetic in nature. What does that mean? That means that you got it from your mom and dad. Your grandma, your grandpa. This is how the diseases got to you. 
in the weird that God already knew about that. God might have not known the word genetic, or he might not have cared to know. He might have. But God, knowing that this thing called sin, Paul said, I was born in sin. And in, in sin did my mother conceive me. Why? Because she was a sinner. Paul, I mean, David, in the book of Psalms, relates a story of a time in his life that was probably the lowest time in his life. There had been some low times in David's life from the day that he got anointed king as a little boy. Remember the story? He, he knew he was anointed. The prophet anointed him. He knew that he would someday be the king. If God says you're going to be king, you're going to be king. If God gave you a promise, saints of God, let's hold on to the promises. It might not look like it right now. But he goes and he kills the bear. He kills the giant. He kills the, the lion. And then he kills the giant. And he's still just a little boy. He's just the brother. He's just a, a kid. And Saul is the king. And so he went through a lot of time alone running from Saul, running for his life. But finally he becomes the king. They crown him. And the Bible says at a time when the king should go to war, David was in the palace. And we know the story that he looks out of the window and he sees a woman, Bathsheba, taking a bath. And he desired that woman. And that's the way sin works. That's the way temptation works. You need to run. Hardly ever you see the word flee. We don't flee from the devil, but the Bible does say flee youthful lust. But David instead went and got her to come into his palace. She would say no to the, she wouldn't say no to the king. We know the story that she got expectant and she was going to have a little boy. And the prophet found it out through the Holy Ghost. And remember the story where the prophet told a, a, a scenario to David. And then David said, find me that man. And the prophet says, thou art the man. And conviction hit David. When conviction hits the saints of God, it's a gift from God. Right. There's a lot of people that are living in sin. They feel good living in sin. Right. But a child that God is dealing with, I don't care who you are, God is going to keep on giving you conviction, yeah. not condemnation. God did not come to condemn us. A lot of people look at Christians. Oh, they, I tell my wife this all the time. They say, oh, those Christians, they think they're better than everybody else. If I thought that I was better than everybody else, I wouldn't be in the church. I wouldn't be here. I'd be having a good time. But because I'm not better than anybody else, because I was also born in sin and shaped in iniquity, I've got to have the house of God. So it's not that we ever say, I've never heard one Christian in all my 70 years, and I've been in church all my life, I've never heard one Christian say we're better than they are. We are in the same boat. We're all lost without God. The reason I'm here is because without him, I am so lost. I've got to have the Lord. I've got to have the house of God. I've got to have the God of the house of God. And so here David, now he finds himself with a finger pointed at him. Thou art the man. Conviction hit David. And the prophet said, you're not going to die. You're not going to lose your kingdom, but the baby will die because of your sins. And we see David goes and fasts and prays and gets in sackcloth and ashes and he would not eat and he would not come up from praying, God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But pretty soon the, the men came and he could tell by the way they were coming at him that, that the baby had died. He perceived the Bible says he washed himself and uh, and they said, well, that's kind of odd. While the baby was sick, you, you prayed and you were broken to pieces. And now that the baby's dead, you now you want to eat. And David made a statement that I think it's a beautiful statement about our children. That's why we don't baptize children because they don't have any sin accounted to them. 
They were born in sin and shape and in iniquity, but as long as they're innocent little babies, the Bible says they belong to God. Children are the heritage of the Lord. And David said, David, this is the word of God. He said, my child is already over there and, and, and he can't come back to me. So if that child cannot come back, don't expect the, the, the saints or, or the apostles or anybody to hear your prayer. Go straight to God. He's the only one that resurrected from the dead. I don't need to pray to Paul. I don't need to pray to Peter. I can pray straight to the heavenly father. And so David was broken, but now he's going to eat because he said he can't come down, but I, I can go to him. So the rest of my life, David was basically declaring, I'm going to stay under the covering. And one of the Psalms in the, it, it, that he wrote, wrote in the middle of his lowest time and he begins to write have mercy upon me how many of you feel like we need the mercy of god don't ever get cocky with god don't ever get arrogant with god don't ever get proudful with god don't ever think well hey i tell my kids your dad might be the pastor but without god we're all lost we gotta have god and he will resist the proud but he'll give more grace to the humble. And so David did the right thing. He bowed down. He says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. And then he uses the word white out. Blot. Blot out. My transgressions. What does blot out mean? When you blot something out, it's like white out. Right. Or you take something that's the same color and you kind of take a sponge and you blot it out. Is it gone? No, it's still under there. Right. But David said, I know that my sin is there. But if you cover me, if you cover my sins with what? With your tender mercies. A lot of people think that God's love and God's mercy is enough. Oh, God loves the world. God loves this and God loves the alcoholic. God loves all. God loves us all. Yeah, God loves us all. But I'm telling you what, you got to have your sins blotted out. You've got to come to the Lord and say, Lord, blot out my transgressions. How is he going to do that? He's going to get a little skinny preacher to take you into a watery grave. And, and you know what you're going to do? You're going to blot out. You're going to take. The water in the name of Jesus and that water will signify the blood that was shed at Calvary for the remission of your sins. That's how you blot out your transgressions. Or you can just walk around thinking that you got your sins blotted out. I don't want to just think about it. It's time that we get baptized in Jesus' name. What can wash away my sins? Wash me though. And David was speaking in, into the future. I've told you many times, David was way ahead of his time. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. There's repentance right there. Somebody was talking about repentance. We got to have repentance. Sister Nancy, beautiful job. Beautiful, beautiful job. Oh, I, I'm an apostolic. I already did the three steps. I already uh, repent, be baptized in Jesus' name. Got the Holy Ghost, speak in tongues. That's it, right? <laughs> I wish. Every day I got to repent. Every day I got to have access. I heard a wonderful message tonight. This afternoon, Brother Tony, if you get a chance, go listen to his dirt. That's what he preached on dirt. You know what you and I are made out of? We're made out of dirt. The dust of the earth. He talked about the blind man that God spit on the ground and then took a little bit of dirt, made a little salve, and he anointed the eyes of that man. And, and then he got a revelation. Brother Tony brought a revelation so beautiful. See, the spittle of Jesus was divine, and the dirt was of the earth. When you get the divine and the dirt, saints of God, anything can happen. So don't. Go around thinking somehow you've already arrived. Stay dirt. Stay humble. And see what God can do with his anointing upon your life. Never, never walk around arrogant thinking, oh man, I'm an apostolic. We all fail. We've all fallen short. That's why we fall. And that's 
Can I preach tonight? That is the reason we fail. It's so that we can not get arrogant. So that we can stay humble before the Lord. So we can show the world, I'm no better than you are. I'm in the same boat. All I've got over me is the blood of Christ. And I need it today. I'll need it tomorrow. I need to repent every time I fail. Every time I fall short. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. I can't forget. I can't. Have you ever tried to forget something? The more you try to forget, the more you think about it. And David is saying, I keep thinking about this thing that I did. I should have never did. Done that, Lord. I Against you and you only have I sinned. Against thee, thee only have I sinned. And done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified. When thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. I don't want people that look at me, David, out here wallowing in the sackcloth and ashes. And so what kind of God is that? What kind of God would do something that would cause the king to waller in the, in the dirt? David said, I want to be clear. It was not God's fault. It was my fault. Against thee and thee only have I sinned. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Isaiah 43 and 25. I, even I, am that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake. Huh. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that okay if God does it for His sake? Yeah, he loves us. He wants us to be saved. But if if I turn around right now, if I turn around and walk away from God, you know what? God is still good. If you walk out on God, guess what? God is still good. He didn't save you for your sake. He saved you for his sake. And if you fail and if you fall, guess what? He'll pick you up. Why? For his sake. Remember when he would destroy all of Israel and, and, and Moses told the Lord, said, Lord, yeah, you can destroy them all, but what is people going to say? That the God that brought them out of Egypt couldn't take them to the promised land? God said, good idea. I think I'll keep working with y'all. <laughs> and, and God is here to take us all the way. We stumble, we fall, but we want the devil to know, devil, when I fall, I'm going to get up. Why? Because I've got the blood of Jesus covering my sins. I've got His blood washing me every day. Every time I repent, He forgives me. But Pastor Rios, I'm afraid I'm going to do it again tomorrow. Well, do it again tomorrow and then repent. Oh, you're giving us sin. You're giving us per you don't need, need permission to sin. How many times have I said that? You don't need permission to You are a sinner that has been saved by the grace of God. Not by your deeds. Not by the works. So I don't, I don't need to get baptized. The baptism that takes place in that water is not your works. That's the work of the blood. That is the work of the Lord washing away your sins. And preachers want to say, well, no, if you get baptized, that's works. Well, I need the works. <laughs> I need the works of God upon my life. It's His way or the highway. With God, there is no other way. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. So people quit trying to find another way. We'll do it in the titles, Father, Son. No, he said, do it in the name of the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. Why? Because there is no power in any other name. For there is, I want to do it God's way, don't you? I want the blood. I need the blood. I need the covering. I, even I, am he that blotteth out your transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. Just because he, he chooses not to remember your sins. He chooses that. But he's the all-knowing, right? So if the can you imagine the power that he has? You and I try to forget. We don't have the power to forget. But this all-knowing God says, you know what? I'm just going to forget about it. But whenever you walk away from the covering of the blood, it all just pops back up. And it's Bible. It's, I, I can show you in the Word of God. Isaiah 44, 22. I have blotted out as a thick cloud. Somebody say cloud. 
as a thick cloud. It's, that, it's not there no more. It's now like a cloud. Did you know that there is nothing? There is nothing that is that can be destroyed. Nothing. Everything that you see either goes back to dirt, to rust. It, 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 it goes into smoke. Everything. Nothing that is cannot be undone. Scientists can tell you it might turn into something else, but it'll always be. So here is the God that's saying, I'm going to take your sins. And it's going to be as the thick cloud, thy transgressions, and as a cloud, thy sins. That's, that's what I want God to do with my sins. Make it like something else, Lord. But he's the only one, that, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he pleads with them, return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. You want your sins to remain like a cloud, or you want, it to, you want your sins to remain red, like crimson? The Bible says in the book of Acts, repent ye therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And I've said this many times, whenever you begin to feel the presence of the Lord moving in the house, how many of you felt, you know what I'm talking about? You feel God is in the house. I felt the Lord when Sister Nancy was given the report. I, th I, I think it's so important for us to give the, the Lord praise for what He's done. The more you praise Him, the more he's going to do. But if we just walk away, well, he loads me up daily with, with his benefits. No, come into the house of the Lord Sunday night, Sunday evening when we walk, enter into his gates with what? God, I got a whole bunch of thanksgiving in my pocket. Now, I'm not going to take up another offering. I'm not talking about money. I'm just, I'm just somewhere inside of you. There ought to be a thanksgiving. God, thank you for this week. You brought me through and here I am. I preached the other night. I found a place and, and, and I couldn't get the whole message out. But praise God, I found a place in the kingdom of God. And I'm not going to let go. I am surrounded by some of the greatest people in the world. Why are they great? It's because, Brother Freddie, you understand that without God, you're nothing. Sister Debbie, you know you need, you need the Lord. Sister Rios, all of us in the house, we know. And that's what makes us walk the walk. Not because we have to, but because God had mercy on us when we were walking in our sins. While we were yet in our sins, He died for the ungodly. Repent and ye therefore and be converted. And this is talking already in the book of Acts that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come. I love those times of refreshing when the Spirit of the Lord moves. Colossians 2.14 this is blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. Well, do you know why I quit the UPC? I quit the UPC, and you see them on, on YouTube all the time. I quit the UPC because they got too many rules. They got too many regulations. I don't know if you ever watched at the doctor's. When you're at the doctors, you go in because they had a, you broke your leg or it hurts. One of the first things that they do is they x-ray you. My wife just went and got her, her tooth uh, checked out. And they put her in an x-ray. And then the doctor will take that x-ray and put it up to a light. Sometimes we need to, sometimes we need to look at our, our excuses that way. God, let me give me an X-ray of my excuse. Oh, yeah. Too many rules and too many regulations. I got to do this, can't do that. Nah. Now think about it. You're standing before God, and you got a little measly little X-ray. Lord, here's the reason I quit going to church. Now think about it. Will it hold on that day? When you say, I had to do this, kid do that, and all that. And Jesus said, yeah, but I hung on a cross. And they pierced my side. Spit upon me. 
And they buried me like a dog on the side of a hill. But I never gave up. And because I never gave up, I never gave in. When the devil tried to tempt me, I said, it is written. Every time the devil come against me, I said, it is written. Saints of God, we got to get the word of God in our hearts. And every time the devil tries to give you a, a little excuse that you know it's never going to stand on the day of judgment, you got to say, devil, it is written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And on the third day, praise God, he rose triumphantly. Let's stand. Amen. Some of the incurable diseases that we have come upon us. Somebody was asking a doctor the other day, what about monkeypox? And the doctor says, I don't know why they're using monkeypox only. He's there and he begins to name a bunch of diseases that are rampant right now. He says, why are they making a big deal out of monkeypox? But we know that cancer uh, is rampant even now in children. Dementia, Alzheimer's, advanced lung, heart, and kidney and liver disease, stroke, other neurological diseases, including motor neuron diseases and multiple sclerosis. This is just a tip of the iceberg of the things that are going on right now in this world. The word cancer, if you ever look at the, I hope you don't, but if you look at the astrology, cancer is a crab that depicts in astrology or whatever you call it, cancer is a crab. They say that the reason that the doctors called it cancer, because cancer in Greek means crab, is because cancer begins in a small place and then it begins to go through your whole body. And once it gets so far into your body, there is no turning back. Incurable diseases. And I hope you understand what we're talking about here tonight. There is no injection. There is no pills. Uh, right now, they're working on this cancers with stem cells that are trying to find hope, especially for children. And they might be able to heal the body. But the, the Bible makes it very clear. If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it in from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. So that tells me, saints of God, that I might die of a cancer, I might die of a heart attack, or, or my body might fail, and, and, and eventually everybody's going to die anyway, in one way, shape, or form. We never know, maybe a car wreck or whatever. But, but, but what the Lord is not interested in, He said, uh, this is the way I look at, at, at your body, at your physical. We None of us like to be sick, right? None of us like to hurt. None of us like to be nauseous, but those are things that have come upon humanity because of sin. And eventually that will take our bodies down to the grave. But praise the Lord. The Bible promises that if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, if you've been born again, you're not going to taste of death. I'm not going to take, you know what the psalmist said? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And I'm making an appeal to Imakli. Imakli, are you living in fear because of the diseases? There is a greater disease that is called sin that is worse than cancer. Sin will take it to hell. You can die with cancer and go to heaven. You can die without an arm and go to heaven. And when we get to heaven, we're going to have a new body anyway. So who cares? But I've got to take care of the sin business. There is healing for us today. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you that you've made a way. You said, come now, let us reason together. Say of the Lord, not another religion, not the Virgin Mary, not Joseph or Joseph Smith or any other person, but say of the Lord Jehovah, Jesus himself, though your sins be like crimson, they shall be white because I'm going to cover you. Bless us tonight, Lord, as we dismiss and we go to our separate homes and bring us back at the appointed. And give us a flavor, oh God. Give us a hunger for the word of God. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen, amen. amen. Come back Wednesday. Lord bless you.